Hello, my name is Matt and welcome to CardioVisual. Here we're gonna go over another patient scenario. So you have a patient with a chief complaint of I can't breathe. They're 24 years old and they're male. They have no medical history, but they do have a history of palpitations in the past. They said they come on about every couple months or so, and then they spontaneously go away. What would you like to know about this patient? Well, if you've been following this series, you know that we always get vitals on these patients. So you have a patient with a blood pressure of 114 over 84. Heart rate is regular and strong. O2 sat is 100% of room air. Would you like to get an EKG on this patient? I would absolutely love to get an EKG on this patient. Yes, they're very young, but that doesn't mean that they can't have any kind of cardiac issues going on. And as of right now, all their vitals are completely normal. So here's his EKG. What do you see? Pause the video and see if you can determine your own interpretation of the rhythm. So what I see is a rate around 105 beats per minute. I'm a very lazy person in regular rhythms. I always try to just get a big box method and determine the rate off of that. And then I have some arrows pointing some weird morphologies in V1, AVL, and V5. You can also see them throughout such as lead two and V4 and V6. There's a little blip at the very beginning of each of the QRS complexes you're gonna know that there is a short PR interval and there's up slurring of your QRS complex. This makes me think that the patient has Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, which is a pre-excitation syndrome. While you're with the patient, the patient starts having some shortness of breath and some chest pain, and so you get another 12 lead. And this is what you see. Take a minute, see if you can break this one down. So when I look at this, the first thing that I catches my eye is the rate. It is very, very fast. It's about 300 beats per minute. It's also wide. The QRS is a little bit more wide than they were in the previous one. And it also is extremely irregular. If you look at just lead two or lead one or lead three, you might start saying, eh, it can be kind of regular, a little irregular, but look in V2 and V1 and V3. Those are your money leads for this, for your determining your regularity, and this is very irregular. So it's an irregularly irregular wide complex tachycardia because it's over a rate of 100, so it's tachycardic. So normally when you start hearing wide complex tachycardias, you instantly think of ventricular tachycardia, but those are regular. This is actually going to be AFib with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome or AFib with pre-excitation. You're going to have a wide complex tachycardia, which we do have here. It's going to be irregularly irregular, which we do have in V1, V2, and V3. You can see that the QRSs are occurring erratically. You can also notice changing QRS morphologies and sizes. And the ventricular rate is nearing 300 beats per minute. Your normal AFib should never go near 300 beats per minute. I want you to think of all your AFib with RVR patients and think of the highest rate you've ever seen. You're thinking 170, 180, 190, maybe 200 but nothing nearing 300. 300 is when you start thinking of pre-excitation syndrome, such as Wolf-Parkinson-White. So what do you do with these kinds of patients? Well, we can treat them. So you can have a stable and unstable, unstable as we know, Edison before medicine, synchronized cardio over at them. Simple, simple as that, it's really easy. Stable is you don't really treat it just because it's Wolf-Parkinson-White. You treat the rhythm associated with it, such as antidromic or orthodromic AVRT or atrioventricular reentry tachycardia, which is very common with wolf parkinson white patients, and we'll discuss that a little bit later, or your AFib. For your AFib with pre-excitation, you never want to give a beta blocker. You don't want to give amiodarone. You don't want to give anything like that. You don't want to give anything that's going to shunt all those impulses down, something called the bundle of Kent which is the pre-excitation fiber that connects the atria to the ventricles. And the reason why is because our AV node acts as the gatekeeper and actually squashes a lot of these impulses for us. In AFib, you can have atrial rates nearing 300 to 600 beats per minute. Imagine if you had 600 impulses heading down an accessory pathway straight to your ventricles. That's going to send the patient directly into ventricular fibrillation and then into asystole. So you don't want to give any kind of AV nodal blocking agents to these patients. Procanamide is the only medication to be used for AFib with WPW. And you can also use synchronized cardio version. With these patients, you can also give some Versed, some fentanyl, make them a little sleepy, kind of forget what's about to happen, and then you can synchronize cardio birth them. So why is all this? So you actually have something called the bundle of Kent. It connects the top part of your heart or your atria to your ventricles. 
there's various ways of how it actually connects. It can connect to the Brickinji or to the bundle of his, or there's tons of different ways that it can connect, but that's honestly not super important. That's more of an EP issue. Besides AFib with pre excitation, you can have two other types. They're going to be a wide complex tachycardia that looks like VTAC, or you can have a narrow complex tachycardia that's going to look like your typical SVT. Your narrow kind of one is going to be an atrioventricular reentry tachycardia. It's going to be orthodromic. And that's all you really need to know about these. We can obviously get into more treatment options later, but just follow your own protocols. When in doubt, synchronize cardio over them. And it's really difficult to determine if a patient does have antidromic AVRT opposed to ventricular tachycardia, just purely looking at the EKG. The only way you can really tell is the patient that has been confirmed to have Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, and then they go into a wide complex tachycardia. You can assume then it's going to be an antidromic AVRT. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below with your thoughts or questions. And I hope you guys have a great day.